Hi, my name is Corey Pereira and I'm a sound editor and mixer based in Austin, Texas. And today we're gonna to take a look at the new gen post bundle and how I've kind of integrated it into my workflow. All right, let's take a look. All right, so what we're gonna do is take a look at how I've used the new gen plugins on a recent documentary mix that I did uh, for a film called Run Like the Devil, which examines the Senate race between Beto O'Rourke and Ted Cruz. Democrats have been aching for uh, a charismatic. So the first plugin we're gonna look at in the bundle is the VizLM plugin right here. And this is gonna be great for a couple different reasons. First of all, what it's gonna do, uh, it's gonna give you a full set of metering. Um, so in this case, I'm doing a theatrical mix. Um, so it's a Democrats little less important at this stage for, in the process, uh, okay. uh, but later on, I will actually go back and do a broadcast mix. Uh, so the great thing about the VizLM right here is it's gonna have all the kind of common standards um, that you might run into when you're doing work for broadcast. So especially here in the States, a lot of what I'm gonna use is the A85, so this one right here. Uh, you can see there's a whole bunch of other standards, so depending on what network you're mixing for, uh, you can kind of get their spec sheet and find the right one, select it, and then uh, make sure that you're hitting spec. So in this case, I'm doing a film mix, so it's just kind of sitting here, but later on when I go back and do the broadcast version, um, I can go through the whole film, and what it'll do, it'll give me an accurate readout um, that I can then know that I'm on spec. So a lot of uh, television is gonna spec out negative 24, so you can kind of you know, pull this up and make sure you're mixing to the right levels. So a couple of things I really like about the VizLM um, is that it actually has memory. So that is, it's gonna go through, it's actually going to know what the time code is right here and it's gonna track it. So the really nice thing about that is as a mixer, uh, once I've kind of gone through the whole film, it'll kind of remember um, each of the points in the film. Uh, and then if I go back and need to make a change, let's say over here, it'll then apply that change to that little section. So the really nice thing about that uh, is you don't necessarily have to play it all the way through to kind of get an accurate uh, reading on the levels. Uh, so again, uh, that's the VizLM. Uh, another metering tool they also have available uh, is this guy right here, so the Visualizer. And the really cool thing about the Visualizer, um, I actually use this a lot when I'm doing Foley recording. I'll often pull this up just so you can get a full kind of spectral view uh, of the whole frequency range. You can kind of see where the energy is dispersed across the different frequencies, which is really cool uh, as well. And again, I like to use this a lot when I'm doing Foley recording is I can have this pulled up on when the actual Davis input channel and you can see in real time kind of where the spread of the frequencies are, which again can be really helpful. All right, so again, the first plugin we looked at was the VizLM. You can kind of use this for metering uh, when you're going through a show. Uh, you have your visualizer right here. So there are a couple other plugins that I'm currently using in my template. So the next thing we're gonna do is going to our encode section right here. You can see that um, each of the different uh, stems that I'm gonna be printing out, I'll go in and put an instance of the NuGen ISL, which is our inner sample limiter. Essentially what this is gonna do is let me dial in a setting. Uh, so right now I'm working on a film for a theatrical release. So I'm gonna leave it on this film setting, but you can go in here uh, and then depending on what you're mixing, especially if you're doing broadcast and they, let's say you have to have negative two or negative 10 as your max, you can kind of come in here, select the setting right here and it's gonna give you inner sample accurate limiting, which basically means between samples, sometimes it can get a little louder um, than some other meters can detect, but the inner sample limiter will actually look between those samples and make sure that you're not exceeding that uh, to make sure they're broadcast safe. So when you do deliver to a network, it's gonna come out uh, at the level that uh, you're supposed to deliver at. So again, I'm gonna insert this on all of my buses right here before I go to my prints. So the next plugin we're gonna take a look at is the down mixer. So uh, again, usually when I do mixing, I'm gonna mix in surround. For this project, I'm doing a 5-1 mix, but I'm also going to deliver a couple of other formats. So I'm gonna have an LTR to your left total, right total version of the mix. And for that, I'm using uh, the Surcode plugin. So I'm encoding a Dolby ProLogic 2 version of the mix. Uh, but also, especially when I'm going to web, I'll go back and do a separate mix to deliver for the web. 
And in that case, instead of using the ProLogic 2 encoder, I'm actually using the new gen down mixer. So the thing I really like about the down mixer is it does give you a lot more control on how it kind of folds down the 5.1 mix to a stereo mix. You can see just starting off, there's gonna be some different presets. But yeah, it's just really nice. You can kind of come in here and as we're going through the film, Davis was you can kind of see Pele, Zeus, and Jesus. how it's folding down the surround information yeah, especially. Yeah, so you can just come in and subtly tweak it. Uh, and all of these settings are also automatable. Usually I just find one good setting and kind of let it run for the whole thing. Uh, but you do have the option of actually automating those settings as well. So yeah, it's just another really useful tool in my setup. So the next thing we're going to talk about, I'm going to jump down to the music tracks for that, um, is the up mixer. So essentially what the up mixer does is just, it'll take mono stereo sources and then convert them up to surround formats. Uh, so in this case, I'm taking a stereo score, which is pretty typical for a lot of films I work on. And you can see right here, I'm going to have stereo source material. And then what it's going to do, there's going to be a whole different, whole bunch of different presets you can kind of choose from, or you can build your own. So what I've done in this case, um, you can see there's some music here. Election. And United down States here in the lower right hand section, you can kind of see how it's spreading it around. So again, uh, what I did on this film, I went to the film score. Uh, one preset, which is pretty good, but in this case, I wanted to kind of fill out the surrounds a little more. So I grabbed this right here, and then it'll actually let you pan it back into the surrounds a little more, uh, which can be really cool. So in general, what I'm gonna do in most mixing that I'm doing, I'm gonna take all of my stereo source material, I'm gonna route them to a bus called Upmix, and then I'm gonna insert one instance of this for all the music tracks. So essentially all my stereo music tracks get routed to this one plugin and then upmixed in a way that it just kind of fills out the surrounds nicely. Uh, the other place I'm also going to use the upmix is on the production effects tracks. You can see down here at the bottom, my last two production effects tracks actually I've routed to a similar bus right here called PFX upmix. So essentially what that's doing is I'm going to take some source material that's mono and just want to kind of spread it out a little bit into the surround space. So I can come over here. So you can see right here, we're going to have a section where I've taken a mono file and I send it over to my upmix bus, which you can come up here. And then right here you can see, kind of similar to what I'm doing with uh, the music, I'm really just taking this mono source, and then kind of spreading it around a little bit. So again, it's just gonna fill out the surround space a little bit more. And then of course I'm gonna add backgrounds on top of that. And again, you can kind of do the same thing I'm doing here with the music and the PFX. You can also do that with stereo background sources. And sometimes I'll then kind of automate it and kind of spread the backgrounds around to the rest of the field. All right, so you can see here, once I've gone through the whole film, I'm gonna print out the various versions. And right here, you can see I have the full mix um, in 5.1 and then also in stereo. And then I'm gonna have my stems right here. So the first version of this mix I've done at the theatrical level, it's gonna be premiering uh, in a theater next month. So we're gonna be creating a DCP from the 5.1 version. So that's kind of my first priority on my initial mix. Uh, but what we've also done is created a couple other versions uh, for broadcast and then also for the web. So what I'm gonna do, so you can see right here, I have my stereo version of the mix, and I'm gonna go up to Audio Suite, and I'm gonna go down to Sound Field, I'm gonna to go to Nugen, and I'm gonna select LM Correct. And the LM Correct is a really useful tool. Uh, essentially what it does is I can select a mix that I've recorded, and then I'm gonna hit the Analyze button right here. And this will just take a minute, but essentially it's going to go through the whole film and it's going to find out the integrated loudness level as well as the, the max, as well as the peak level. So we'll just skip ahead to the end of this. All right, you can see now it's gone through the whole film and it's going to find the integrated loudness level as well as the peak. And now what we're going to do, I'm going to come to the presets and I'm going to come down here to the A85 which is gonna be the broadcast spec for most networks here in the States. 
And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the mix I've done and I'm going to then create a quick broadcast safe version of it. So the really nice thing about the LM Correct is the way it kind of goes through and uh, takes one mix and kind of boosts it to the next levels is a lot more natural than some other options. Um, so it actually does a really good job of making it sound, um, you know, pretty close to your original mix, but it's then going to be exactly compliant. So ideally later, um, we'll go back through and do a separate broadcast mix that's a little less dynamic. Uh, but this is a really useful tool when you are doing a theatrical mix, but also want to be able to create uh, another version for broadcast, but also you can do the same thing when creating a version for the web. Uh, so again, it kind of does the same idea what you can do with a limiter, but it's going to be a lot more natural sounding. It's also going to be a lot more precise as far as going through and making sure it's actually hitting uh, that negative 24 spec. So we'll just take a minute to go through the film. All right, and there you have it. So now it went through the whole thing and has now created a boosted version of the mix that will now be broadcast compliant. All right, so that's a look at how I have been using the new gen post bundle in my workflow, and I hope this video has been helpful.